up YouTube. Uh, so I got a quick uh, little uh, tutorial I want to show you here. I got my little X32 rack uh, racked up in this case here. Hooked up with a X32 or the X Touch here. This being routed into it via Ethernet. Um, real quick, a couple settings you want to tap into is if you want to go up under your setup. You want to go to here. You want to go to um, remote, and you want to make sure that under remote you've got X Touch over Ethernet selected. So you want to make sure you come down here and select that. And once that's all done then you can come up and start futzing around. And I'll show you a little bit more of how you do that right here. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks. So okay, so here's the basic layout that I have here uh, set up. So we got uh, X32 rack that is uh, being uh, controlled by the X-Touch little controller here and then I've got this all sitting inside a circle 3 designs rack it's pretty swanky yeah look at that emblem very cool and then we got it just all routed I got it set up hooked up to with an Ethernet cable into the X-Touch and then got it going out of the back of the um, X32 rack here uh, I usually have my little router plugged in there but I have it just routed in like this for now and then run into my UPS battery backup right there. One you set up kind of makes it heavy but it's pretty great. Um, then uh, I guess I'll show you it's all set up now but I'll turn it off real quick. The one thing you have to remember when setting this up is that you got to hold select while you do it. So let's see if I can pull this off um, on camera. So when you first start it up, it should look something like this. And then these little scribble strips, what we want to do is make sure that your X control here is set up or is selected. And then over here under network, we'll make sure the DHCP is selected. Once that's done, we can also set the brightness of the LCD if you want, or contrast it looks more like, and then press select here. And once that's done, it'll bring you up to this next page and it's going to say, you know, no link, I mess with you. I have this issue, I have had this issue before, but then what I do is, um, then you should just be able to push scan, push your encoder there, and it should just sync up, theoretically. Let's see. Hmm. So, yeah, if I have had the fuss with this before, so let's see, let's try this one more time. There, so yeah, for some reason, sometimes that'll give you, throw you for a loop. Uh, it hasn't done that to me for a while, but so now, should be able to see and have everything show up to how it's showing up on here. So if I was to go to my home tab and look, it's gonna basically be the same thing, and so when I move this, it should be moving my channel here. So channel one is going. I'm moving it here, my master fader. Same thing, should be dialing in. So yeah, so now let's uh, go over some kind of more of the basic features and just have a basic rundown. All right, so let's go over the features here. So I'm gonna go left to right, top to bottom. So we've got eight rotary encoders here that can be controlled up here with your encoder assign uh, buttons. So when you press gain, this is going to apply to your first eight channels. Uh, you can turn the knob and uh, change the gain up or down. Pan, same thing, it's gonna you move it left or right and it will uh, choose the pan left or right. And you can click the button to set it back to zero. Um, EQ. Here we have a couple pages. Um, first, the first not, uh, encoder will uh, basically be able to help you cycle through any channel that you want, and uh, it dictates it here, and it'll show it over here as well. Um, in these boxes, and then you have a page. So the first page is going to be your low cut. You can engage and disengage it. Um, also, your four bands, um, and you can change. Uh, you can boost or cut normally. 
but if you touch and turn, it's going to change the actual frequency. Uh, then you can head over here and on page yeah, there's page two, you can go and you can actually change the Q. Um, and the low cut it can also be accessed here and engaged or disengaged. Um, and I suppose I should say of note that all of these buttons where it says clip next to them can be kind of thought of as an engage or disengage button. So when you're in uh, gain, it doesn't really apply to anything, but in pan, you can press it and depress it and it will um, uh, become a uh, uh, assign or uh, unassign from, from your main left and right bus. Um, then if we move on uh, to EQ, you can engage or disengage your EQ. You can engage or disengage your little cut. Um, and then you can, well, there is no other ones for the EQ um, to engage or just engage, but then on uh, uh, we'll move on here to one through eight, sends one through eight. You can engage and disengage from your sends here from each bus. So if you wanted to have, say, select your first bus and then uh, uh, unassign it from your, or your first channel, and you want to unassign it from your first bus, first aux, and you can do that, or aux two, you can do it to them all quickly if you'd like. Um, and then likewise, you can select channel two or three or four or five and it will dictate and you can see which bus you're selected on or which channel uh, always in this uh, little screen here. Moving on, that's basically the same thing as one through eight, buses one through eight, then nine through 16, say if you wanted to send to your effects buses here. Um, and likewise, on assign or assign to each effects bus if you wanted to uh, do that for broadcast or live streaming purposes or you just wanted to make sure something didn't get sent somewhere for a mixed minus, or you didn't want certain effects getting sent, or you wanted to set up a subgroup situation and then unassign things from your master, you could go back to pan and then assign your channels from your main left and right, and then come over here and select and set up a stereo subgroup or regular stuff, subgroup, and, uh, mono, I think, um, um, and then be able to do it that way. Moving on to dynamics button for your encoder sign. Same thing here, you can, assign, you can quickly uh, rotate and assign to which channel you want to get to here from this first encoder. Um, for now, we'll stick on channel one. And then same thing with this clip button here, you can uh, you, basically same thing to the EQ uh, button in there. You have four different pages. So on the EQ, it applies to basically the the boost and the cut of the EQ, and then also the uh, frequency of the EQ, and then on the second page, it applies to your um, Q, and um, what else? Let's see, what else does it apply to? Uh, your, your different shapes. You can touch and turn to change the shape if you want to. Under dynamics, you can go to your um, gate, and you can engage or disengage your gate. You can engage or disengage your compressor. And then here uh, in your assign uh, page, you can go and engage or disengage your DCAs by just touching on the knob there. So say if you're in channel one and you want to assign it to just three DCAs, you can go like that. You can also use this engage or disengage button down here to assign it to mute groups one through four on this page. And then if you go to the next page, there's two assigned pages. Um, and then also if you want to mess with your auto mix settings, you can do that here on the first assign set of assigned pages and then on the second set, page four, the second set of assigned pages, you can go and assign to your DCAs that way as well and then your mute groups five and six. So if you want to go about doing it that way, you could as well. Then moving on, uh, we have um, these buttons, which I don't believe do anything, and then um, all of our buses, as well as a global view, basically a home page button if you want to go back to your main layer. But then your buses are pretty self-explanatory, 1 through 16, and it's, it works basically as a send on a fader. So if you wanted to, now this is bus 1, if I had a monitor mix on stage, I could throw up my faders to wherever, and then whoever is on the second mix, maybe it's a drum wedge or a center wedge instead of the left wedge, go here, and then I could set all their levels and then toggle back between what I had set and then uh, quickly clear it if I wanted to, too, like that. Uh, which is pretty cool. What was happening there? Um, a little bug. Um, yeah, and then 
continuing on, 9 through 10, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then uh, same thing, yeah, then if you want to do uh, go back to your main home layer, you can just press the button to toggle back again or press your global view like that. Um, then moving on, we have uh, two little banks of effects uh, uh, parameters here to d jump to your effects engines. And then sandwiched in between them, you got your mute groups, um, basically a little tab here. So if you wanted to, we could press this and it's going to show my um, parameters of my uh, room verb there, I believe. Let's see. Yeah, we've got a vintage room. And then we've got on our next one, we've got a hall reverb, stereo delay, and stereo chorus. And then if we want to jump over to our other effects over here, I have a bunch of graphs set up, a dual graph EQ, and then another dual, four duals, and then like that. Toggle back to the home page, And then here, mute groups. I have one through six set up, so you can always, um, push them and it's also going to show you and read out up here what's engaged. So there's mute group one, mute group two, mute group three, four, five, six, and you can engage them all really quickly too if you want to do it like that. And it'll show you in your graphic representation so you can make sure you know what's engaged or disengaged. Um, other than that, basically all these buttons under this besides your fader banks and your channel, uh, left, right, and your fader bank left, right, um, are going to basically do nothing. As far as I know, if anybody has any more info that I don't know about, let me know. But yeah, basically these buttons light up, but they don't really do anything as far as I know. That being said, we also have our master fader here. This is also always going to be designated to your main master left and right that you can always bring up and down like that. Uh, and it will also apply that obviously on the mixer if you have it all set up right. Then if you wanted to bank left and right, we can do that with your fader bank buttons here and it'll just take you quickly and that's a quick, nice workflow. Probably gonna be jamming on that a lot. Um, same thing with channel, you can go left and right like that. Or like when you're in your whatever pan, or when you're in your EQ setting or your dynamics, you can quickly get to your different buttons in a similar way, or to your different channels in a similar way. Okay, so that's kind of the basics of our um, pages there, and our, of our rotary encoders. So, um, uh, with all that, Ma mainly a lot of the issues of understanding this that conceptually are going to basically be behind our uh, encoder assigned buttons up here. So, uh, and there's a couple special little secret uh, tricks, little cheat codes you can do basically, and, and those are basically within the gain. If you go here, if you notice when I touch, when I push and turn the encoders, different things happen. Those are the kind of cheat codes, you, if you will, that happen within this board. So, if I push and turn, you'll notice that the input assignment is changing. So basically, if I wanted to say, get channel 32 here for some reason, because I wanted my talk back there, I could just do this, or I could have my aux routed in there as well, but like that, that's an easy way to go through and get that routed in. Um, now another thing, next cheat code, uh, would just be in pan, and that's pretty simple, but basically, uh, with the encoder, when you push it, you can mess it up all, you know, your, your whatever, or left and right pan, and then once you push it, it signs it right back to the middle. Quick and easy way to get your pans reset. Uh, EQ, the touch and turn is going to be applicable to, well, I think we already talked about this, but what if you want to change actually which uh, frequency your parametric band is assigned to. So if I wanted to make my lowest PQ band, 200 or 500, 400. It's a little touchy, so that's the only problem I see with this that I'm not a big fan of, but better than nothing, I guess, if you're just trying to quickly get at it. Uh, next um, is uh, uh, touch and turn. Uh, there's nothing that it does here, I don't believe, for your sends, but when you get to your dynamics, like say, when you touch, that's what assigns to your DCAs, and uh, also for your mute groups. Well, not for the uh, encoder uh, depressment or pressing, but uh, just for your DCAs. Um, yeah, likewise, uh, so that's basically your cheat codes there. Um, and then also remembering just, I think, that you want to remember all, all of the, that goes into uh, what happens when you push these buttons for your engage and disengage buttons. I think the biggest thing you want to remind uh, remember on this console that's not similar to other consoles if you're used to digital consoles is that um, these buttons basically 
uh, dictate uh, engage or disengage. And there's certain features that happen when you press and turn on these encoders. So yeah, like when you press and hold and you can change the input on the gain, when you press and hold, it can change the actual frequency for each of your parametric bands. And then when you can actually press and hold on your second EQ band to uh, change the shape of your EQ. Um, so if you wanted four parametric bands instead of just a high shelf, like a default setup, then that's you can do it that way. Um, see what else. Um, yeah, and then when you want to make sure that your whatever is engaged, like your gate or your compressor, you can do that with your engage or disengage button. So you just want to pay close attention to your engage and disengage button and your touch and turn features if you want to get to those specific features that I mentioned. Um, other than that, basically we covered all the obvious stuff. And um, yeah, I think that basically summarizes it. If... Um, uh, anybody, I guess, yeah. So if anybody has any other uh, insight on what these buttons might do down here, like this uh, uh, touch and turn knob here, <laughs> uh, let me know. But uh, it seems to be kind of pointless um, as far as I know. Um, but I guess just real quick, I could also show you that uh, the thing I was talking about that uh, once you're the, with the master fader, it's always going to be assigned here. That's how that's all set up and then if you wanted to um, same with your channel one if I was here it's gonna if I move it up here it's gonna be also happening down there same as the master fader there right um, yeah so that's kind of the basics of everything and then yeah if I was assigned on a effects button here if you go to my effects and if I was messing with let's say some parameters in my vintage room so if I wanted to mess with the, the mix, you could, well, let's see, where would that be? Or let's say I'll mess with the uh, the time. Is that doing, oh, I think I have to be on the next one. No, I was right. Yeah, so if I, I think you can see that there. So the mix, you might be seeing that. Oh no, we're set. Yeah, we're set on three. So now if, I, now if you see it here, you can see the reverb delay up there getting changed. When I do it, and then the same thing with our decay, everything, I can basically just change it from the knob. So in that way, it's really nice. This really speeds up the workflow of what you can do with this mixer. I, re I really like it with this setup because um, it's quite a small form factor. You usually have it set up on a gig and just run and gun if you want to. Um, yeah, I really like this this kind of uh, setup for uh, Behringer and minus with all the uh, Music Tribe stuff. I, I love it if they kind of went more in this direction a little bit more. I'd love to see something that was basically this footprint but gave me like eight inputs and like a couple, maybe four outputs, something like that. That would be kind of the perfect size little thing uh, in a digital um, but um, it's hard to fit all that you know uh, processing in it at the same time um, but I could see something like this working really well with like an M32C and a DL32 stage box all set up. Um, I guess I'll go quickly over my little setup I have here too. Um, what I got going on is I got uh, my X32 rack and uh, I've got this uh, Circle 3 Designs case that I love, what's up, what's up, can I get a sponsorship, please? <laughs> I don't think they probably offer that, but we'll see. <laughs> uh, and also back here, super basic setup, but I just have my um, ethernet uh, cable set up and I just plugged in here to the remote. And yeah, that's basically it. Unplug my router that I use for my iPad and it's all set. And then I'm uh, just running off of a little 1U UPS uh, backup battery here. Um, by cyber power and yeah it's really awesome so anybody has any questions or comments feel free to shoot me them uh, if you want me to see me make any more uh, videos like this let me know what topic you want me to cover or if you have any uh, questions feel free to leave them down in the comments if you like this feel free to like and subscribe ring the bell notification and anyways hope uh, everybody's having a great day thanks bye